Hello, Dr. Joe here of the drjoe.com and the 2020forum.com. So flu outbreaks wax and wane annually. Influenza is present in the world population throughout the year, 365 days in a year, and it moves from the Southern Hemisphere to the Northern Hemisphere and back to the Southern Hemisphere. And it does that every six months. So it is crossing the equator twice in a year. So if the virus is present, uh, in the world population throughout the year, why do we have seasonal outbreaks? Why do we have these outbreaks occurring at the same time every year? That was a question that I was asked recently and I felt I needed to do a video about it. So in this video, I'm going to give you a very reasonable explanation as to why we have seasonal outbreaks during the winter months. And also, uh, as a consequence of watching this video, you're also going to find out what you should do to protect yourself against flu as well. So, why do we have seasonal outbreaks uh, during the winter months happening almost with regularity at the same time every year? Why does that happen? So, is it because of temperature and humidity? Um, not really. That doesn't fully explain it. So, is it because we are huddled up indoors, spreading the virus from one person to the other, uh, during the winter months? Um, not really, because if you think about it, uh, during the summer months, we're also crowded in buses, in trains, and in offices. So why don't we have summer outbreaks? It doesn't happen, does it? And also, if you remember, the elderly, they tend to get hit as well by flu. Uh, they're the ones that are really badly hit. Why does that happen only during the winter months? Why doesn't it happen during the summer months? Because the virus is present uh, and is with the elderly in the nursing homes uh, 365 days in a year. So why do they get heat during the uh, winter months only? So if temperature, humidity, being crowded uh, do not explain why we have the seasonal outbreaks, what does? Well, there's a bright gentleman. Uh, his name is um, Edgar Hope Simpson. Uh, he's late now. Uh, he was a British family doctor. And he came up with what sounds like the best explanation for why we have seasonal outbreaks. Now, this Edgar guy uh, was a very bright guy because he's the one that came up with uh, the, the cause of shingles. So he's, he's got a very high IQ. Uh, so, uh, you know, his credentials uh, should not be sniffed at. So he came up with this explanation and he called it seasonal stimulus. Okay, seasonal stimulus. And the seasonal stimulus seems to be solar radiation or the lack of it if you like and what does this mean uh, what this means is that uh, during the summer months uh, there's because of solar radiation uh, we're exposed to a huge amount of sun and that leads to a robust uh, production of vitamin d in the skin and of course in the body as well so when you have a robust production of vitamin d uh, during the summer months it is protective likewise uh, during the winter months there's hardly any sun, there's no solar radiation or very little of it. Uh, what then happens is we have widespread vitamin D deficiency. And that's the reason he came up with as a possible explanation. That's what he called the seasonal stimulus, the lack of vitamin D availability uh, during the winter months. So uh, is there proof for, for this? Well, th there is proof and plenty of research actually to support this view. But one proof came in a weird setting. Uh, this was by one Dr. Carnell. He's a psychiatrist and uh, he was looking after prisoners. And because he bought into the Edgar Hope Simpson's idea of the uh, vitamin D protective effect, he was giving his uh, prisoners, the prisoners he was looking after, he was giving them daily dose of 2,000 units of vitamin D, okay? to the patients he was looking after in this prison setting. This was in California. And as it happens, there was an outbreak of flu uh, in the prison and all other prisoners were being hit left, right and center by flu. But none of Dr. Kanner's patients were hit by the flu outbreak in that prison setting. So that was one proof that vitamin D does provide protection against the flu. So, is there another proof that vitamin D is protective against the flu? Well, there are plenty of research studies to support that view, to support Edgar Hope Simpson's uh, idea. But I picked up just one uh, research here because I don't want to keep the video too long. And this is a randomized uh, control trial uh, published in the American Journal of uh, Nutrition and it's titled 
randomized trial of vitamin D supplementation uh, to uh, prevent seasonal uh, influenza A in school children. Uh, basically, what they did in this study was they took a group of school children, split them up into two groups, gave one group vitamin D supplements uh, between the months of December 2008 and March 2009. And then the other group, they were given dummy pills. So one group had vitamin D supplements, the other group had dummy pills. And what they found uh, in the study was that during those uh, winter months, the group that had the vitamin D supplementation had a 58% reduction uh, in flu infections uh, compared to the other group that had the dummy pills. So that was one of the proof that vitamin D helps to prevent uh, flu infections. Okay, so if that's the case, uh, how does it work? Why does it work? Well, uh, here are two reasons why it works. Okay, the first one is uh, is this one here. Uh, it is that the active form, which is the 125-dihydroxycholecalciferol, uh, uh, acts as an immune system modulator, okay, preventing excessive expression of inflammatory cytokines. Uh, if you remember very well, the uh, cytokine storm is the reason why uh, lots of people have died from the coronavirus, and it also happens in flu as well and vitamin D is protective against that. So it dampens the immune system, so the immune system does not overreact and overproduce cytokines that usually lead to death. So that's one thing that vitamin D does. What else? Um, well, here's another fact for you. Vitamin D dramatically stimulates the expression of potent antimicrobial peptides, which exist in neutrophils, monocytes, natural killer cells, and in epithelial cells lining the respiratory tract where they play a major role in protecting the lung from infection. So what this is also saying in plain English is that vitamin D is an immune system booster. So when you have something that helps you to support your immune system, that boosts your immune system, it can only be of help. It cannot be a hindrance. So um, this is one good reason why vitamin D is essential, especially uh, during the winter months. So what's the deal here? Well, the deal here is that Edgar Hope Simpson has given us a reasonable explanation as to why we have the seasonal outbreaks of flu uh, during the winter months. And you have to take advantage of that. He talks about the fact that there's lack of solar radiation, uh, which means we lack vitamin D. We don't have adequate vitamin D to protect ourselves during the winter months. And the solution is readily available. We got vitamin D supplements, and that's what you must be using uh, to protect yourself. Now, here's the other thing. Uh, vitamin D not only prevents uh, a flu attack, it also softens the severity of the symptoms if you do uh, get a flu attack. So once you sense flu coming on, you initiate the treatment straight away, and when you do that, you will actually soften the symptoms, you will ameliorate the symptoms, and the flu attack will not be as severe as uh, it ought to be. So uh, you can use it for prevention, and you can use it to uh, soften the blow. So um, it's, it's right there for you, and it's a very simple intervention that you should take advantage of. Now, the authorities uh, in the US and the UK, you know, they've gone very cautious and they recommend using 10 micrograms of uh, vitamin D, which is 400 uh, international units of vitamin D supplements during the winter months. I don't think that's adequate. It's, I don't think it's protective enough. Uh, personally, I'm using, uh, I'm using this one, and this one is uh, 4,000 international units. That's how much I'm taking daily. Uh, I will admit I do forget sometimes, but uh, my target is to use uh, one of these uh, capsules uh, once a day. So uh, I think a higher dose than that recommended by the authorities will be appropriate during the winter months. During the summer months, you can uh, ease off uh, on, on, the, uh, on the pedal. So uh, that's my view, but should you take 4,000 international units, mm, that's up to you. I would rather you have a chat with your uh, doctor and both of you can come to uh, some sort of compromise as to whether you need to go above the recommended dose of 400 international units per day. Uh, that will be between you and your doctor. But personally, I'm taking 4,000 international units and I'm gonna be doing this until the end of the winter months. So uh, hopefully you got some value from this video. Uh, if you did, as usual, please give the video a thumbs up, please like the video. And also please share this video with your friends, family, and colleagues. 
And uh, if you haven't joined us yet at the 2020 Forum platform, please go ahead and join us. Now, if you've got any comments, any questions, uh, please go ahead, uh, leave them down below. Um, I, I think that's about it. Oh, by the way, there should be two videos on your screen now. Uh, go ahead, click to watch any of the two videos. Uh, there are videos that are designed to enable you to take control of your health. Um, I think that's about it. Until next time, uh, please take your vitamin D, okay? Uh, until next time, uh, this is Dr. Joe signing out.